five o'clock it is. So, that's <clears throat> interacting, etc. Okay, good deal. So we'll see how this goes. And we'll see how many people actually show up to this. Um, so many people show up to all of this. I'm actually kind of curious uh, for this, this one here. I don't usually do a lot of a, uh, advertising or anything like that. And I'm not really much of a good self-promoter. I never really have been. So just how it is. But so, and I'm only going to be here for about an hour this time because I actually I have, I have guests coming. So, and I got to do the whole host thing. So I'm only going to be here. You only got from get me for like 60 minutes and then it's like a hard limit. I'm out of here. So uh, welcome to all. Uh, I don't know who all everybody is and such, but I'm going to do my best here with, with this. So tonight's topic, uh, if I mean, it's just something I've kind of been running with. It's been, this has been kind of ruminating on this for a while now. The idea of the selective breeding thing that we're seeing. And this comes as a... This is something I talked about a long time ago on a video that I did, I don't know, uh, welcome, welcome to everybody, about, I don't know, six months ago or so, I mentioned the idea of my dog, which is a Border Collie, and uh, howdy, howdy, <laughs> um, and she's Border Collie, so there was, you know, I just kind of mentioned this, that like, you know, she doesn't, she just kind of naturally herds uh, people or anything, anything around there, she'll just kind of try and herd them, right? Well, so there was this story that I saw from another TikToker, um, content creator. He's a huge account. He has like a mega account, right? And he was talking about the story in Idaho about a, about a border collie that had gotten separated from their family. Welcome, welcome. Um, to go and it would got lost, right? And then was found like a couple of days later out in a field somewhere herding animals, right? Like this is a story. And it's like... And of course, the dog was just happy to do it because that's just that's how they were bred, right? They're they're bred to herd animals. That's just what they do, right? Well, so I noticed this in my dog. My dog will do the same thing. So, uh, in in this other dog's case, welcome, welcome. Um, you know, this dog was just out in the field. This this lost dog was out there doing what what she loved doing, which was herding other animals, right? So there's sort of a there's there is an aspect of the breed. Okay, so. Now I'm going to carry this through, just like as, as I promised. Like, well, the idea of okay, what does it take to 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 get people to go and enforce a bunch of objectively horrible stuff, such as go find a squirrel, go tear apart some guy's house, ransack his house to find a squirrel, and then go and unalive this squirrel. Yeah, so I kind of have a problem with this because, like, I, I have to think about, you know, I, I think back to the Milgram experiment. Welcome, welcome to all of you. Um, so the Milgram experiment, for those who don't know what that was, the idea was you would go in and, and you had a, there was an actor behind a wall, okay, and that actor was pretending to be shocked and... The the, te the the test subject was actually the guy who was who was who thought he was administering these electric shocks, right? And because the guy was standing next, you know, a, a guy sitting next to him was in a white lab coat and had a clipboard, and would say, "Yeah, you know, I'm going to ask this question of this person behind the wall, and if they answer it incorrectly, I'm going to tell you, instruct you to to send an electric shock to this person, right? That was the whole. And and the person who was sending, who thought they were sending the electric shocks. They were the they actually they were the ones that were being studied, not the person outside of the wall. Okay, you understand how that works. So it was it was sort of a deception that, that Milgram was doing, and to the horror of so many people, they found that something like I think it was like sixty or sixty five percent of people would administer what they thought was a lethal, like uh, uh, like to unalive somebody with a electric shock on the other side of the wall. They found that this huge number, this absurdly large, like two thirds, would would be willing to do this as long as they were told that they had permission by the guy in the white lab coat and the clipboard. And so, if they thought they were going to have, if they thought they, in other words, they would do it if they thought they had permission to do it. Okay. So we have a group of what is it? I'm as I understand it, it's like something like four agencies and a sitting judge, right? 
that were willing to... This is an objectively stupid thing to do, right? To go and... Like, you're going to like do a full swatting for somebody because of a squirrel? Are you kidding me? That's got to be the... Uh, like, uh, how do you, I can't think of a metaphor better to describe a mass psychosis than that. I, I cannot think of a better metaphor than that. Like, you've heard me talk about a mass psychosis before, right? What is a mass psychosis? It's when people, typically at the top, go completely crazy, right? And it's not just at the top in terms of finance and government, but even people who work in government who are in in, um, in positions of so-called authority. And keep in mind, remember, people who've usually earned their authority tend to not abuse their authority, right? You understand? So they, they tend to not abuse their authority if they earn it. But if you give somebody authority, then they tend to abuse their authority a whole bunch. So... It, this is difficult for me to process the idea that, that there would be these this many people who were willing to do something like this. Okay, so what does it take to get people to think like that as opposed to, you know, saying, you know what, I'm not going to follow that order. That's an objectively stupid thing, and I'm not going to go do this. Like, I'm not going to go and raid some guy's, I need to do this, raid some guy's house over a squirrel. Like, this just isn't going to, this isn't going to fly with me. Hmm? What does it take to do that? Well, this is where I think that the breeding aspect of this comes in because I think that we've, we've <laughs> I hate to say it like this, but I think that we've bred out of Americans the, the disobedience aspect. I mean, America was, was founded on, on extreme disobedience to the crown, extreme disobedience to, 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 to tyrants, right? And we, I think we've bred that out, it seems like. So... Just my, just my thought, that's my opening sort of position on this. You know, so what are your thoughts? Because we were supposed to be a, nat a nation of rebels, and we were for the most part for the longest time. The entire country is built on that. The entire country is built, you know, on FU, right? That's the whole country's built on that whole idea. And so we have a bunch of people that are supposed to be strong enough to say, no, hey, listen, I'm not going to follow that stupid order. Yet, we have a bunch of people who did it. So, uh, what are your thoughts on this? So, now that I've gotten that kind of opening monologue out of there, let's talk about this idea. Again, I've flayed open the idea of what I think. So, let's see here. So, uh... Yeah, I know exactly. That's just that's just it. There's, you know, and like, this is. By the way, there's another question I have too. Like, is this the one thing that like I was just talking with this with a friend of mine? I said, you know, like of all things to happen, right? We have a squirrel that is that is taken out by a government agency by like several government agencies, and this is what actually finally tipped because somebody says like well so we, you know nobody galvanized over them shutting the economy down wrecking all these businesses nobody did all this stuff right nobody got upset about it but it's like i don't think that's the case i think that's the wrong way i think that's an oversimplification i think this is the straw that kind of broke the, the camel's back for a lot of people where they're looking at this going dude this is nuts like really this is you you've you've got you've been given illegals five-star accommodation like and thousands of dollars per month in free stuff you're doing that but you have time and a half to do to go and do this you know to go and and and, and ransack somebody's house over a squirrel of all things see, see, yeah i know see yeah i know that's why i didn't say anything about that that's why I didn't, you know, didn't mention anything about that so i tried it let me just try and scroll back here a tiny bit for those of you that don't know me, I'm not terribly tech savvy when it comes to some of this live stuff, but I'm doing these actually because of the counterfeit accounts. Because the one thing that the counterfeit accounts don't have is me doing this stuff for real. The other counterfeit accounts that are out there that copy all my stuff, they don't have me. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're danger. Yeah, that's exactly right. Me, Kamala, or Trump, uh, I don't care. Um, you're not going to like my answer on that. I, I just, I honestly, of, of all of them, I don't particularly, I don't consider Koala a, um, 
a serious candidate. I never have. I have considered that effectively a, like a like a placeholder type candidacy from the Democrat Party. Um, I, I'm not on either side, by the way. Just for anybody that follows me, if you, if I, I, it's pretty consistent. If you go back and look at all my other video work, I'm pretty consistent on this issue. I don't generally care which which one of these people. I will say this. I saw, and I did a video earlier today on this. I saw that uh, that Trump is trying to like get you know um, more support from like Ron Paul and others, and it's like you know, and Elon has been pushing this. And my question is is like, where was this rhetoric years ago? Why why are we just now going down this road? Why didn't we do this ten years ago? Or or in in, in this case, like why didn't we do this like five years ago, or or six years ago, seven years ago? Why did why why now all of a sudden are we are, are we all going to go down this road of rhetoric of saying, hey, now we need to have small government and so on. Where was this rhetoric back then? That's my, I mean, it really, and I think that's a legitimate question, by the way, um, that I would, that I would posit to, you know, well, really to the, to the, to the Trump camp. Okay. So not Trump's Trump supporters. I don't mean that. I mean, just, but like, as far as like the Trump campaign people, my question would be like, well, where was all this rhetoric before and why now? Why, what has changed in the economy to, to now you're like, oh, now you're serious. Like, okay, well, what changed? I'd like to know. What did change? Uh, it's fine. Let's keep younger. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Open. I know. I, uh, you'll have to go. I, I, I am going to, I am recording. At least I hope I'm recording this. I, I, I tried. We're going to see if this works. And if I did, I'm going to, I'll go ahead and repost it. Uh, I hope it's not again. No kidding, huh? Uh, yeah, power corrupts. That's exactly right. Um, Americans have gotten soft. It's well, you know, and the thing is, is that the, the testosterone thing. You know what? Let me. I have to wonder. It's sort of a chicken and egg thing. With I have my own opinion on the, on the testosterone. Is it like is it men's testosterone dropping because they're not necessary as men anymore? Because well, government has basically taken everything over, and they say, oh well, hey guys, we don't need you any longer. Um, we can just print a bunch of money and send it to a bunch of women, and so we don't really need you guys anymore. So you've got a bunch of guys that have said, okay, well, screw it. You know, I'll go play video games. Or is it testosterone's dropping, so it's causing that? It's sort of a chicken and egg question. I actually think it's the former of the two, personally. I think that men tend to rise to the occasion when they're needed, but if you've, you know, if, if you've effectively tried to, er this, this erasure of men, American men, well, I mean, uh, they've done a pretty good job of it, it seems. Uh, they got most of us to take the jab. Yeah, I know. It's 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 not good. A lot of people, it, it, and and there was you know, um, I, I still I know a lot of people who didn't. You know that that, that I didn't, uh, and nobody I know in my personal sphere of influence took it. They said no way. They were like, no, I I don't care what I don't care how, what how many donuts you're offering me. I don't care how many how many McRib sandwiches you're going to bring back to try and get me to show up and, and take some kind of ridiculous jab. Like, I'm not doing it. So, um, rebels have run out. Yeah, yeah there, there, there were, there was definitely, I think that's what it is. And so, ah, hold on, here we go. Let's see if I can get this thing to, to scroll through here. Government purposely reduced IQ and home. Yeah, they probably, come on, stop that. Probably did. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, if, if, if there is something in the food, I, I, you know, like I'm not alone on this. I know that, um, I've seen other videos like this where there's like other con content creators where they ask like, what is up with the food? What's up with like American food? Cause you have these, you have like uh, Brits or, or other people come from other countries and they say things like, Hey, I come over to the U S and then I gain like 10 pounds eating or, or more eating the same food. And I go home and I lose 10 pounds eating the exact same food and the same portion. And like, yeah, that is kind of strange. So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. I think there might be something like that. Um, you know, they broke the family. Yes. They're in 35. Is it 335? Is that what it is? I, I, I always thought it was like 320, but it could be higher than that. Well, and who knows with 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 migration? Who knows what the real number is? So, um, food isn't real. Yeah, I know, kidding. It it's, it it certainly doesn't feel real. It certainly doesn't like it, it, food has kind of lost its state. There was a content creator I saw um, a video. I don't know, a couple days ago, and there was this dude who was talking about that. He's like, you know, is it just me or does like food? Like, just nothing's appealing anymore. Like, everything sucks. You go to this restaurant, it doesn't make any difference. Like, the food just doesn't, 
nothing tastes right. I'm like, yeah, that's a good way of looking at that because I've noticed that too a little bit. I'm just like, I don't get as, I don't get anywhere near the cravings for almost anything now. So it is kind of strange like that. I think somebody sent me something. Thank you, who, you know, whoever you were. <laughs> um, seed oil, yeah, probably. Uh, stuff with sugar, yes. Well, yeah, and, and especially it's not it's not even real sugar anymore. It's that you know high fructose corn syrup. You know, it's not even real sugar. It's it's just like it's like honey or something. Like, honey is real is a real sugar or a form of sugar and stuff. And yeah, most of the stuff now is all garbage. Uh, microplastics that could be too. Um, for real, that could I, I'm open to that idea as well. That maybe the microplastics are you know what was it like when the Roman Empire was uh was dying you know like there was this idea that the that they were eating off of lead right so there was the idea i remember hearing this a long time ago in like an old class where they were talking about like the the, the people you know the the elites would go were starting to go crazy this mass psychosis idea and it was the, the theory was is that they were eating off of lead plates and so maybe they were getting lead poisoning which was making them crazy or something or they were getting mercury or something like that which was making them insane uh, it's it's possible i mean who knows nowadays um, oh my God! Why this thing is so sensitive? You can't you can't touch the the screen without without it you know like jumping on you, and you're trying to read something and it just it just vanishes. Uh, soy vitamins, yeah, exactly. How much is enough Bitcoin? Um, I hesitate to say the word Bitcoin because now nobody will you know now that the algorithm as soon as I say it it's it's going to like make sure that nobody sees this video anymore. Um, but. Uh, for you know, because they don't you know the they don't like the they don't like the B word. Um, how much is enough? I don't know. I mean, a little more than you already got. Um, my wife and I started a mini farm. Yeah, see, that's just it. That's that's exactly right. That's the same thing that 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 we're after. Actually, it's, it's something that I've been working on. I mean, I don't talk about it here, but you know, I've been negotiating on land uh, ourselves. You know, and actually in negotiations currently. Um, waiting to get back some information on whether, you know, there's an easement or a county road and what have you, you know, like all the little technical stuff when it comes to purchasing a property and waiting to get that, that information back. And that's our goal. Cause I mean, you know, I come from, we come from a farm ourselves and, you know, we did that for quite some time. There's somebody on, on, uh, some douchebag on, uh, on, on another platform that I, I guess you can't say that on the name of the platform if you're on, if you're on TikTok. Anyway. But it was another platform who accused me. Like, You've never been a farmer, like no, I, yes, I have actually. So, uh, cattle, uh, cattle, uh, goats, chickens, kangaroos, you name it, I've done it. Um, <clears throat> exotic birds, uh, turkeys. That was another one. All the food companies are owned by black. Yeah, see, you know, and it's. I'm glad you bring that up because you remind me of something actually by bringing this up by uh, the, the food companies. See, so the other day I was I was at the doctor's office. I went to get an MRI. Yeah, for for a, a broken bone, and uh, due to a car wreck and stuff, you guys remember from way back when. Anyway, uh, they were doing a follow up MRI, and uh, they said, "Oh, hey, you may have this. We noticed this and stuff. You may have this. And you check with your primary care." For, okay, fine. But the but the point was is that like if you, I started thinking about this along with I, I talked about this a long time ago, but how do you trust modern medicine when? The, the companies that own the labs are, are owned by BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street, right? So the companies that own all the labs where all your blood work is going to are the ones who also own the pharmaceutical companies. So what incentive do any of these companies have other than to say, oh, you've got this, you need this magic pill. And of course, once you take this pill, it'll cause like five other problems. And then don't worry, we have five other pills you can take. Uh, to counteract all of the side effects of the five other problems that we created because of this, um, you know, like there was a there was an old sales rep of mine who had um, he was on they put him on statins because they thought he had had high uh, was it um, high cholesterol so they put him on statins which caused him to have diabetes which caused him to like on and on and just and it just became this spiral of of like health problems that this guy had and it was a super nice guy. But, and these were problems that he probably didn't really have because they, they and of course they, they're lowering the standards of what, you know, what is and isn't good, uh, blood pressure and so forth, all that kind of stuff. I still took, I took mine last night. It was still like a, what was it, 119 
over 63, 57 beats a minute, which is like, that's pretty normal for me. Um, products, see, oh, see, food products that create illness. In it. Yeah, that's just it. I mean, you have to wonder if that's what they're actually doing. Uh, yeah, lead person and mercury. See, and, that's, and, and that was what I had heard. Somebody had mentioned that. I don't know. If, again, I'm not a historian on that, but that's, I had heard that as well. Lead and aqueducts, yeah. So, yeah, it could certainly um, cause a lot of problems, you know, especially, and, and especially if your elites start going crazy, what happens? It means everybody else goes crazy with them, right? That's the whole mass psychosis thing. I don't know how many of you out there, maybe you can type this in, sound off and let me know. But um, you went, and went to that after school or saw the after school presentation, A-F-T-E-R-S-K-O-O-L, of a mass psychosis that was done like three years ago. Uh, where does the time go? But it was like three years ago. How many of you actually saw that video? Because it's a great video. It's an incredible production. But they point out like that that's what ends up happening is you have your, your, elite, your, your elite that start going crazy and they drag everybody down into their pit of hell with them. It's really horrible. Um, doesn't let absorb. Yeah, I, I mean, well, it doesn't absorb radiation. I, if I'm not mistaken, it's just because it's so dense. Like if you have like four inches of lead is the equivalent of like two feet of concrete. If I rem it's, that's, that's, that's a while back. Uh, from, that's some old reading of mine. Um, yeah, boomers of lead, yeah, no kidding. Um, through uh, democide, probably a form of it, uh, certainly a soft form of democide, um, given the birth rate situation, um, domestically anyway, as far as Americans are concerned, I mean, look at the birth rates. We, we have but to look at the birth rates and say that um, replacement's 2.1, right? I mean, and if you've seen some of my older videos, replacement is a 2.1, we're not even doing that. I think last I looked, we're at like 1.63, 1.64, something like that. And then when they read, when they go in, when the demo demographers go in and redo it later on, they'll probably come up with something like, it's probably going to be like 1.52 or something, probably, maybe even 1.4 something. I mean, it's going to be pretty low because people just aren't producing a lot of kids. And it's, it's not helpful that you've turned a nation of people into a nation of renters. You know, people who were supposed to own land in their own country turned into a bunch of renters who their rents are perpetually going up and up and up forever. So uh, it is raining. Well, it's uh, not so much anymore. I mean, it's like, well, it's like Seattle rain now. Now it's, you know, so um, off-grid mountain property. Yeah, I mean, if you can, if you can certainly get off-grid. It's, it's tough to do um, to, to maintain it. Uh, but yeah, if you can if you can certainly do it, I mean, absolutely. Uh, oh, nothing. Yeah, exactly. That's the plan. Oh, come on. Uh, let's see here. I'm with Buffett on Bitcoin. Uh, person, nothing made from nothing. Um, I don't know. I mean, can you can you create a Bitcoin from from nothing? I mean, I mean, I, I would be willing to bet that there's somebody out there who would give you sixty eight thousand dollars in cash if you could right now if you could produce a Bitcoin out of nothing. You know, in in dollars, they would give you sixty eight thousand dollars that are objectively conjured from nothing. It costs roughly, I think, nine cents to print a hundred dollar bill. So yeah. Um, Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know how to say I'm just trying to keep up with you guys. <laughs> you guys are faster than I am. Familiar with uh, Ray Pete? I'm not. I, I don't know who that is. Thoughts on R versus K selection theory? Okay, so you're talking about, like, I think that's Rushkin? Um, is, that the, is that the author? Don't, don't quote me on that. Um, I'm familiar with the book. I have, or and, and I'm familiar with his work. I am not familiar. I, I I'm not intimately familiar with the research. Um, let me answer it this way. I think, as with the Pareto principle, which is what I hear guys like Jordan Peterson talk about a lot, I think that there is a. How do I want to say it? I think that there is a lack of actual of accurate price discovery in the 
general marketplace. And as a result of that, that creates a several different theories that are downstream. And that's one of them. And so I'm not saying that, 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 that the R versus K selection is, is, is right or wrong. I'm not saying that. The way I, I explained it a long time ago, about three years ago, in the primer video I did uh, that's on YT, the other plot, I guess, again, remember, you can't say that. Anyway, there's a bunch of stuff you can't say on, on TikTok anyway. But if you go find the primer video, I point out, I use a, um, a Fibonacci sequence of numbers. I use it as an example. That, and for those of you who know how a Fibonacci sequence works, it works like this, you know, um, like, well, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, you know, uh, you know, this, two plus three is five, etc. right? Okay, that's how a Fibonacci sequence works. If you change something, then that equation, you know, let's say, let's say that you say, oh, well, you know, five plus uh, six is eight. Well, no, that's not correct math. The correct answer is 11, but if we're gonna put an eight there, but then we continue the sequence after that, right? You have inaccurate math going forward all the way down. So all the way down that chain, you have this complete inaccuracy. Now you could say like, well, but the next equation would be something like, in this example, is, you know, um, uh, uh, six plus eight is 14. That equation by itself in a vacuum is 100% correct. That is totally accurate. And so every successive equation by itself, let's say that they're all correct. So those are, each one of those are mathematically accurate, right? But the sequence is bad, okay? so. This is where I think you get the, the, the all the theoreticians, and I'm, I'm not picking on these guys. I'm just pointing out to my theoreticians that are out there, my, my Jordan Petersons and Rushkins and so forth, like all, all these guys, I, I, I point this out, like you guys are arguing about somewhere down on the chain whether or not you're right about these equations, and those equations in a vacuum are correct. And yes, this leads to this, leads to this, leads to this, and yes, you are 100% correct on all those things. But if your answer way back in the chain is wrong, okay, then you're still gonna have a bunch of, a bunch of inaccuracies all the way down. What happens if you change that? If you, change, if you went back and corrected the math, right, and you said, oh, well, no, instead of, instead of five plus six, you know, equaling eight, it actually equals 11. That means that every successive equation after that changes. Every single one of them all the way down changes. And that means that, that the theoreticians, the, the, the foundations with which they're working then change as well, which means that they have to then go back and say, hold on, maybe we're wrong about this. For, so for example, the Pareto principle um, is that, okay, one square root of the number of people that are, are productive. So if like, you have a, an office of, of 100 people, only 10 are, are responsible for roughly half of the volume. That's where the theory comes from in, in, in the business world. It, the question is, is that, well, would that exist if you actually had accurate price discovery on on your currency, which again, in my channel, I talk about currency a lot. And if you have if you have pinpoint precision accuracy on your price discovery, would you even have an office that had a hundred people in it in the first place, or would you probably have something closer to twenty five, right? So if ten were responsible, then then that blows that whole you know um, that whole square root uh, equation completely out of the water. I'm not trying to like bore people with with the math on this, but it's like like that's the end that's what ends up happening so i'm having to answer that that question by just pointing out that i think there may be something to that although keep in mind i'm not a huge believer in iq science i i think that it is a pseudo discipline i don't consider iq science to be 100 percent hard science because there's too many things that you can't test for you, you like you can't test for like creativity you can't test for and there's some people that like tests just don't work on Right. I mean, I think that they, they, they maybe overthink a question or something like. So I, I question the idea of whether or not I can. I think uh, maybe if you were talking about like a like a like a giant swath of people, like if you were testing like a million people and you were trying to get some some kind of a baseline as to whether or not that they could function in the culture in which you're testing, then that would make sense. And then you probably could pull some kind of scientific data points out of that. Absolutely. But I don't think that. 
that like individual testing, I don't, I'm just, I'm unconvinced that, that that's a hundred percent accurate. I think it's a guideline. I, I just don't know that it's a hundred percent. So not to get too far up into the weeds on that. So that's a hugely boring conversation that again, I find that stuff fascinating, but you know, I don't know what most people really want to go into that. <laughs> um, Healthcare and insurance uh, for profit business. Well, okay. So insurance. Once again, let's let's address price discovery. So, if you in a hard currency environment, insurance can't even exist as a as a business model. It can't function. Um, insurance is effectively just gambling. It's just it's just a, a large casino. That's all it is. You're you're gambling. Uh, your money and you're saying, okay, hey, I'll give you X amount of premium and I'm going to, you know, then the insurer says, hey, I'll cover you based upon, you know, um, you know, risk factors. Again, they take huge amounts of data points. They, it's, it's all statisticians. These guys just take a bunch of data points and they say, okay, well, this is statistically less likely to happen because of da 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 da, -da. okay? Um, and in a group, that's true, right? I mean, statistic, actuary tables, when you're talking about people in a group, are pretty accurate. As an individual, you are a complete wild card, okay? That's where you are, in fact, in a unique snowflake, okay? Even though you're part of the same decomposing matter that makes up the planet, and you are all part of the same compost heap, even though that's true, you are unique in that, like, yeah, you could do something completely, uh, you know, just wild card and throw off all their actuary tables, which I encourage people to do. But insurance as a, as a whole wouldn't really exist in a hard currency environment because as soon as you had a huge, so for example, let's use disaster insurance. As soon as you had a huge disaster, there'd be no way to actually cover any of that. There's, you'd, have to, you'd have to print money. And if there's no way to print money, insurance companies are gone, okay? Same thing with health insurance. It would be like, yeah, you could do it, but you would eventually bankrupt the health insurance industry, which means it goes away, which is what it should do. Uh, and then like, well then, well then how do the doctors get paid? They lower their prices. They do what everybody else in business does. Sorry, doctors, you sell off your Maserati and your Porsche Cayenne because I've never met a doctor who doesn't have a Porsche Cayenne. Um, you sell that crap off. Okay. You, you don't go to the sandals resorts every two weeks. You know, you, you start to live like everybody else lives because like, well, um, you have to lower your prices just like every other business owner. And that's, that's the part that, that gets forgotten about in, in my estimation is that there's this perception that, that the doctors are always have to be rich. Well, okay. No, they don't. They can be like everybody else and, and run a business that's competitive. And if you can't get people, and if you had a, in other words, if everybody had to pay cash to go see the doctor, no matter, no matter what, and, and, and you pay cash for, cash, I don't mean dollars, I'm talking cash as in a non-debt transaction. Understood? Um, if everybody had to pay cash at time of service, it would be cheaper than going to the veterinarian. And veterinarians would have to start lowering their prices too because people would go, hold on, why is my dog, you know, that's, that's, so I mean, like, all these prices have to start coming down. Um, but yeah, I mean, th that's where this stuff comes from. It just, it's, it's the illusion of, oh, hey, look, give us a little bit of money, and we'll we'll take care of you. No, they won't. Um, no different than we see see before. So, yeah, that's what modern you know, and modern medicine being you know, as far as like uh, you know, the shampoos and so forth. Yeah, modern medicine is, is kind of tough. I mean, I have a I have a t I have a tortured relationship with with modern medicine. I would like to think that, that there would be people out there that wouldn't want to do something like that, but sadly, there's there's probably a few. A few folks out there that are ju literally just in it for the money, they really don't care about like your health. Um, I think there are good. Are there, am I saying there's bad doctors or good doctors? No, there's plenty of good doctors. But I, do I also think that there's a lot of people that are just being given a degree because they're like, well, you know, we promised these people a degree and they paid us a lot of money, and so we kind of have to give them a degree and send them out into the world, unleash them on the unsuspecting population, and they wind up at a quack in a box and. So there we go. And then they just, they continue, continue all their quackery. So yeah, eugenics. Um, so a trip for sure. Yeah, I'm kidding. Um, greetings from Iceland. Wow. All right. <laughs> I didn't know there was anybody on. Uh, quick question. Maybe I can find you in your comments. And stuff. The, uh, do they speak English in Iceland? I'm just curious. You know, um, I've never been there. I'm, I've seen pictures. It's very pretty. Um, Estimate. Thank you for whoever sent me a rose. Damn it. Um, 
population in New York City has mental health issues. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I would wonder about that too. Uh, I don't know. I think that there could there could be something to it. When if you if you compress that many people into like one area as opposed to letting them spread out, that's got to do something to your psyche. I would think, right? I mean, because I mean, evolutionarily speaking, what did, how did we evolve as people, right? Whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe you came from the dirt uh, because God told you you are alive, or because you came from the dirt because you just evolved out of it doesn't make any difference. I mean, people still evolved in civilizations that were like a couple hundred people, and then when you move into these these mega over the top cities, that's got to do something to you. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure if 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 like people have been able to like adjust to that. That's just an, an opinion of mine. I don't know. I'm not 100 percent on that. Uh, lead does uh, lead does some uh, some absorbing rather than yeah I could see that um, bongo yeah no kidding uh, do you listen to Patrice I don't I'm sorry I don't know what that is um, to 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 clarify there's very few people that I know of that are in the the, the like the podcast excuse me podcasting space or the the streaming space or whatnot like uh, um. This isn't a full-time job for me, and you know I do these videos kind of randomly when I just have when I have like five, ten minutes here and there, and I can just pull throw something together. Which is why, if you watch any of my videos, there's not a whole bunch of edits and jump cuts because, I, frankly, I don't have time to do that. Uh, I turn the camera on, I'll talk, and, and I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm gone. I've got other stuff that I've got to do. So, um, you know, so for me, it isn't it isn't a full-time profession. Um, so, unfor I don't know a ton of these folks. Every now and again, I'll get invited on podcasts. Usually, you know, like uh, Orange Internet Money podcasts and what have you. And I'm always happy to go and talk about like the the, the, the in depth parts of, of of economics if somebody wants to listen to it. Um, although my opinions generally are going to stray pretty far from the from the accepted norm that's out there. Uh, really, on both sides, because I don't really play politics on it. I, you know, I mean, I call it like I see it. So. Uh, oh, come on. These things, man. I'm trying to scroll down here, and every time I see something, I go to go to read it, then it, like, it, like, vanishes on me. Um, fossil fuel, complete lie, perpetual, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by fossil fuel, complete lie. Like, you mean, like, um, like the, the, the breakdown of, 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 uh, of, of minerals and so on? Uh current civilization based on fossil fuels? Well, um, I'm not sure if that's a question, but I would point out that, like, um, I don't know that, I don't know that what we, what we mean by fossil fuels, because, I mean, like, one, there was a time, I, a long time ago, I did, a, I did the math on it. Anwar in Alaska, which has this huge oil deposit, this massive oil deposit, and I can't, I don't remember off the top of my head, this is like years, that's like 20 years ago I did this. And I did the math on it, I was like, hold on, that would mean that there would have to be something like, based on the size of a woolly mammoth, there would be something, I came up with the number, it was something like, you know, 230 million woolly mammoths would have had to have unalived in like one spot to create that much oil. And I was like, that's not even possible. For them, for that many to even live, I mean, like the, the amount of vegetation wouldn't have even supported that. That just the volume of that many animals, especially animals that are something like what, uh, 60 times the size of a human being? So, yeah, I, I just, I don't know that I 100% go down that road, the, the, the Rockefeller road of, of like it's, it's their dinosaurs. I think that, yeah, I mean, I think all organic matter eventually, you know, turns into to, turns into to oil sure but that's just organic matter i don't know that that's necessarily has to be dinosaurs um personally thoughts on uh, u.s mail service being a being a bank that can uh, that we can pay our land after reset u.s mail service i'm not sure i understand the question uh, I, I you know i i'd love to give you an answer but I, I i'm not sure i understand the question maybe you can uh, refresh it um Print money and get funneled uh, towards top of Ponzi. Well, yeah, it's it's it, well, that's just it, and it requires it requires the um, perpetually cheaper and cheaper labor. That's the challenge with with a Ponzi scheme of currency like this. It's a debt based currency, which means that someone always has to be in debt to give it any kind of value. And the last thing they want is for people to pay off their debt, which is why a long time ago. I mean, if, if you if for the folks that that found that found me maybe like a year ago when I started doing this, I started doing these videos in like November of last year. Um, 
but if you found me like a year ago, you'd see that you know, kind of the progression of me pointing this stuff out that you've got. Um, there's no such thing as an overheated economy. All an overheated economy is is is, is poor people and middle class people paying off too much debt. You know, like you're, if you start paying off debt, then they need to have you back in debt. So then they have to come come up with some some crazy gimmick to get you to go back into debt or keep borrowing. Um, so I think they're one of the reasons they're panicking right now is because you've got a bunch of boomers now that you know bought houses in say 1993, 1994, right? And now those houses are getting paid off, and now they don't have mortgages, so they don't have any. Which is why you're seeing property taxes go through the roof, and because I mean, like all the, you know, in, because taxes, inflation, interest rates, and um, and, in, uh, um, and inflation are all controlled by the exact same people. It's the exact same folks that are always that are always the ones who who control all of that. Um, that's all part of central banking. It's a closed loop system. And if you stop giving them, if you stop borrowing money from them, then their, their, their Ponzi scheme collapses very quickly, especially as the people who were in the Ponzi scheme beforehand start saying, hey, I want my money back. I want, I'm going to take my money out now so I can go do stuff that I want to do. Well, then the, then the Ponzi scheme just collapses. You can't taper a Ponzi scheme. They just, <laughs> that's the end of it. You know, and they just, that's how they work. So, um, let's see here. Global warming, change. Yeah, I, maybe. I mean, it's, that's assuming that it isn't isn't a positive thing. Um, I, I don't go down this road with anthropogenic uh, uh, climate change only because Earth is such an old planet, right? Whether it's flat or a ball, it really doesn't matter. It's been around for a long time, and we don't know. It cycles, right? I mean, so when you when you look at something, I mean, you look at the the how 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 finite human lifespan is. It's hard to to gauge something that we've only been tracking as as a as a as a people for what 50, 60 years, hundred even if it was two hundred years. It's like that's just a that's not even a, a footnote in when you when you especially when you think about things like tectonically or cosmically, the, the amount of time you know when you start thinking about these kind of things. Uh, if money print caused inflation, why are lumber prices back to you know, well? Okay, so let's understand that money that, that inflation. If you understand monetary inflation, is that is by definition printing money. You're creating more money out of whole cloth. Okay, that is monetary inflation. Price inflation happens after. It happens later on. So if you, there's also a fact, there's also a factor of how much demand there is. Lumber prices aren't going to be really high right now. Of course they're not, because banks aren't doing loans to, to builders to build houses, right? Remember that's all because it's, con, it's control. But if you had to remember, if you take lending out of the equation altogether, and let's say that there was no more lending for anything across the board, right? Like all of lending went away. Let's say that that happened tomorrow morning, right? Uh, or Monday morning, eight o'clock, and there was no more lending, no more. In other words, let's say that somebody said, that's it, no more charging interest on loans. We're making usury illegal. Let's say that that actually happened. So you'd see all these banks and institutions go away. What would happen to pricing? Pricing would collapse. Everything, prices everywhere, they would collapse to the cash price. In other words, they would find price discovery very quickly, even priced in garbage dollars, even priced in you know, U.S. garbage nonsense dollars, okay, the toilet paper we call a currency, even priced in that, you would see something called immediate price discovery, and that price discovery would probably be something like a, a house would be whatever the cash price is, which is probably 25, 30 grand. That is not an exaggeration, and I didn't stutter. You heard what I said. It would be something along those lines, because there aren't enough buyers who have cash Think about it. I mean, how many, even the billionaires, even all the billionaires are there, how many billionaires have a billion dollars in cash? It's not very many of them, right? I mean, you get Bezos and, and Buffett and a couple of others, but like, dude, if you actually start thinking how many of those guys actually have that kind of money in actual liquid, not not in not in projected assets, which is what the vast majority of them are, it's, it's projected hypothetical values, right? Um, it's like it's based on, oh, well, the performance of this company will be X amount in however many years, etc. So, yeah, I mean, but if you actually talk about in liquidity, 
actual liquidity, you're talking about some rare air. There's not many people, not many people in the world who've got that. So you would see prices of what is the average person. Now let's bring that down to like reality for the average person, for you, me, and everybody else, right? How many people have a thousand bucks in their bank account? I don't remember what the number was, but it ain't very many, right? It's something like, what, 30% or something like that, 40%. How many people have 10 grand in liquid in their bank account right now? Not very many. Now you say, oh, like 401k, doesn't count. Doesn't count because that's in a casino, okay? We're talking liquidity, actual liquidity, meaning it's available right now. So not you have to sell stock first. No, that doesn't count. Actual liquidity means you don't have to first sell stock, you just have it available right there, instant liquidity. Well, that's not many people have 10 grand. So how much would a house sell for if everything, if there was no more lending? Yeah, it's a pretty scary thought if you, if you bought at the peak of all this, right, boomers? It's, 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 it's a horrifying thought that like, oh my God, I paid $650,000 for this house because I was thinking there was going to be a greater fool later on that was going to give me a million dollars for it. No, if there was no more lending, then you guys are hosed. You are done, sir. Um, and there's no way out of it. It's going to be like, okay, well, now you're going to eat whatever, you know, 600,000 bucks, you know, worth of loss. And, and that's how it should be, actually. That's, that's an actual free market. So when, it, when, when, when you bring up the idea of, of price inflation on, on specific markets, for example, and I'm not criticizing, I'm actually answering this. Is, that's actually a really good question. Um, and because a lot of people see that, right? They see that, well, this price here is going down or this price here is going down. Yeah, but consider, remember, you have to look at where the money is being lent to and where it's not being lent to, right? It's, bankers are not lending pe to, to builders on a large scale to build houses in the U.S. right now. And the reason that is is because they don't want people buying these houses. That are, it would bring the price down. And they just lent, like, what, half a trillion dollars into this real estate bubble, this, this Ponzi scheme, and they can't have their balance sheet cut in half. Remember, if you just put yourself in that situation, let's say that your friend came to you and said, I want to buy a $100,000 house. And you're like, okay, that house looks like it's worth 100,000 bucks. I'll loan you hundred grand. And then two weeks later, the, you know, the neighbor of the house sells it for 50,000 bucks. And you're like, uh oh, the comps on that house are 50 grand. You just lent your friend hundred thousand dollars on a house that now is worth 50,000 bucks. You can't even get, get your money back if your friend defaults. So if your friend says, oh my God, hey, you know, times are tough, I got fired, I, 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 I can't learn to code or whatever, then, then now you, your balance sheet shows that you own, you, you lent 100,000 bucks on a piece of property that is now worth 50. And it's gonna get a little loud only because the rain is now starting to come down. Up here. So we're, we're live, we, 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 take it, we take it as it comes, right? <laughs> Uh, I hope that makes sense, though, as far as like why the you know prices, like individual prices, can fluctuate, but the overall number of dollars in circulation has increased, no question. Um, you finally find people don't stink. I, they may. I don't. I, I mean, I don't think so. I think that the the smarter people will go extinct more likely. <laughs> it's just, I, I think idiocracy. It's sort of like the. Uh, the nuclear power plant thing. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that they want to have nuclear power. Like, let's do nuclear power. And it's like, you are the same guys that are saying we're headed towards idiocracy. Do you hear yourself when you talk? Because it's like, if you're saying everybody is going to have this total idiocracy that exists and we're all going to work crops and, and, and everything is brought to you by Carl Jr., but we want to give those people nuclear power plants because somehow they'll be able to figure out how to run their nuclear power plant. If you were pitching that movie to me, I would tell you to get out of my office. So, <laughs> um, also works in other countries. Well, I mean, health insurance, sure. I mean, again, we don't know how much they're printing on the back end of that. That's the problem. And of course, if you're looking at like Europe, for example, well, I mean, I would be all, all about having the United States pull all of their military out of Western Europe altogether and just say, you know what, that's it, we're done. You guys can take care of yourselves, right? You're big boys. And watch what happens. They, most of those countries would have no clue how to handle that because they made all these promises of, like, free everything to all their people. Well, it's only free because you have the U.S., you know, sending, you know, zillions of dollars to bail them out. And as an American, I'm pretty tired. 
as are many Americans, and would love to see that come to an end. Uh, let's see here. No one's built. Yeah, that's that's just it. You got that as well. Some well, prices going back. Yeah, they might be. I mean, again, on a on a, on a commodity basis, on a day to day. I mean, who knows? I mean, I, I'm not a, just for the record. I'm not a day trader. I, I anybody who notice that you're you're watching me on a live stream. This is the account. Notice that all the fake accounts don't have me in a live stream because they can't. They don't have the, the I'm the real Slim Shady, okay? <laughs> so, like, I'm I'm the real shit Slim Shady and I'm standing up, okay? So the other, the fake accounts that are out there that contact you guys and say, oh, hey, I've got this great investment idea. Day trade your way to freedom. <laughs> Come to my class. Yeah, that's not me, dude. That's, that's a scam. Don't give them any money. Or give them money, but just don't expect to get anything back from it. You know, just, just know that you've been scammed. Um, you know, uh, what builders want to build? Well, of course they want to build. I mean, they've got, you know, they got to make money off this. But have you seen the state of modern construction? Somebody, somebody actually, let me answer that question because I feel bad. Somebody asked me that question. They sent me a, a DM and they said, hey, can you weigh in on the state of modern construction? I'm like, you really want me to? Um, because I'm a contractor myself and Dude, it's pretty bad. It's getting really horrible. I mean, looking at some of these, I, I, I'm convinced these people don't know how to make a how to make a miter to save their lives. Um, they they can't have any of the eaves like connected solidly, and everything has like 600 nails in it. It's like it's it's ridiculous to watch all of that. Um, let's see here. They speak um, Iceland Icelandic. Oh, Icelandic. Sorry, Icelandic. Uh, Interesting. Okay. Fascinating. It's 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 a, it's a really pretty country. I've seen pictures. Um, I come from the northwest you know, part of the United States originally. So, you know, mountains and snow and all that stuff, all that craziness. That's where I actually come from. So, I mean, I'm familiar with, you know, with those kinds of, like, really picturesque, like, you know, uh, uh, scenery. Most everybody speaks English here. Tribes. Fed rates. Uh, hold new value bond market. Uh, well, we'll see what happens with it. I'm not an ex. I, I, you know, I don't follow the Fed that closely. I just, I just don't. I mean, uh, like I said, I, I'm a little too long term for that. I know, I just don't follow the. Everything nowadays is turned into this, <clears throat> this like really short term casino thing where you have CEOs of major companies and all they care about is what's going on in the next 90 days. They, they're not thinking about the long term health of the company. You know, five years from now, that's the next guy's problem. What do they care about that? And it shows. I mean, it's why you're seeing the quality of everything just go right in the toilet. And it's going to stay there because they're not, you have companies that are no longer in the business of making that product. They're in the business of just trying to make a profit off of whatever they can. And then that's it. They don't really care that, that the product that you bought, and you're like, what the hell? I mean, this thing broke after three days. Yeah, they don't care. They don't care that the, the metal that it's made out of is complete garbage. All the, for example, I mean, you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, either one of them, let me pick on them both. Uh, and you're like, you want to buy a shovel, for example, right? And you, you go in there like, oh, you know, I'm looking for a shovel. And the, the guy comes up and says, oh, yeah, okay, well, what kind of shovel are you looking for? And you're like, ah, you know, I'm looking for a shovel. Something that says, you know, I'm doing okay, but I'm not afraid to go grave robbing. I mean, I'd like to find something kind of, you know, that fits it's my more my personality. And he shows you the shovels. And you're like looking at these things. And, you go, and as soon as you buy one and go home and start digging with it, you know, the, the metal bends because it's garbage metal. And yeah, I mean, it's just, it's these companies who, who used to be in the in the business of making shovels, they're not in the business of making shovels, they're just trying to, in the business of trying to make as much money as they can, and they don't care what happens to, you know, all your money. Um, oh, come on, this thing keeps doing this. Uh, I appreciate your dry wit more than you can ever know. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, uh, it depends on the person you're talking to. Some people do like it. Other people find that tedious. Um, uh, do you believe uh, if we could? Uh, do you believe? Do you believe if we did not misappropriate our tax dollars, we could afford health care for the citizens? Yeah, probably for a time. Um, the you, you could probably get away with it for a while, only until the the, the number of people absorbing. The resources outnumber the people that are producing. That's that's really it. That's the challenge that every country has, and that's why they want fiat currency. 
even El Salvador, for example. I know El Salvador, the orange internet people, orange internet money people are just gaga over El Salvador. They're like, oh my God, as, as if it's never been tried before. That was done before in Nicaragua under the Sandinistas. I mean, like, this is not a new idea. This is, this happens every now and again. A Central American or Latin American country um, says, yeah, hey, we're gonna clean up this town and we're gonna, we're going to lock up all of our political dissidents or ship them to America, which is what's happening. Um, and, uh, and we're going to have this, this peaceful, this peaceful country and look how awesome it is. And people, you should move here immediately and give us money. Like that's not, that's not a new thing. That's been tried a lot over and over and over. And the, the, the question is, is that it works for a little while until the people there start saying, Hey, I want more and more and more. And the government doesn't put its foot down and say, no, dude, we're not doing any of that for you. Like we don't have any money. We're broke. We're broke. We don't. Like, I mean, government has nothing. Government has to borrow it, print it, or steal it. That's it. And and if you don't want your taxes to go up, and you don't want us to borrow any money, which we shouldn't be doing in the first place, and you don't want us to print it out of nothing because you don't want to lose your spending power, well, then the answer is no. And of course, no politician wants to say no, be, because politicians are terrified of, of telling people no. Because oh my God, I mean, I get I may get elected. Well, okay, yeah, that means you have to go back to your farm, then, doesn't it? Well, but I don't want to do anything. That's that's politicians right there, man. They don't want to, they don't want to work. I mean, like, don't, <laughs> they they want to promise you stuff, and that's how it works. So so do I think that that uh, that healthcare? Yeah, for a while it w- it would work for a little while until eventually so many people got used to the idea of so called free healthcare, which it's not free because in order to make it free, you have to enslave the doctors and the nurses and all the staff, and like then, then you could do that. You know, but it's that's not going to happen uh, because most because if, as soon as you do that, the doctors are going to say, "Well, I'm not going to go to med school and take on all." I'm not going to do this. What if it's all free? Once again, you get what you pay for. If your medical school is free, put yourself in that position. You're on the operating table, and your doctor got his degree because you know, well, it was free to go, and you know, he had time to do it. So. Yeah, probably something that most of us don't want to do. Thoughts on uh, decentralizing um, autonomous organizations? I don't know what you mean. Like decentral autonomous, like uh, that's, that's that seems. I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying I, I don't understand the question. Like if you can clarify it a little bit, uh, or or maybe hone it in a little bit more. I can I can try and maybe weigh on it if I can. Uh, for the record. Just anybody out there, if I don't know the answer to it, I'm going to say I don't know the answer to it. I'm not a politician. I'm not going to try and, you know, like, I love Iowa. I come here every year with my brother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, global warming, uh, no winters, tree growing season, but in food. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe the cycle of the earth, the, the, the cycles of earth itself, you know, are, are, are good for, you know, having a warmer climate because growing seasons are a lot longer. So it's entirely possible that there's actually a benefit of that as opposed to a negative. Um, can't we just stop printing money? What would happen if that stopped? Well, I mean, it would be pretty cool to watch that happen. That would be, uh, I'd get, I'd make a big old bowl of popcorn for that and season it with like this uh, cheese powder that I have. It's really cool. Anyway, so um, what I'm saying is that, like, yeah, I mean, dude, if, if they stop printing money, you'd, you'd see, again, you'd see prices correct very quickly. You would find price discovery. Let, and again, let's assume for a second that they stop printing, like, for real, stop printing money. Like, for real. Like, actually said, you, you know, you can never trust anybody with a printing press. You just can't. That's why you're not supposed to trust anybody with a printing press, printing your money. Um, going back to 1865, which I've covered a couple of times. Um, but you're never supposed to do that. But let's assume for just a second, for just a moment, that you could, in fact, get governments across the world to stop printing money, like, right now. Okay, like, like you're just throwing a switch. You would see something called major price discovery. You would see what's called a massive liquidity crisis. That's what they would trot everybody out. All the Harvard, you know, tea bags and all the Princeton and Yale and all those other, you know, university people, they, they trot those guys out in suits and with combed hair and so on. And they're going to tell you like, oh, well, this is a liquidity crisis and blah, 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 blah. And we, you know, the, 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 you know, we need to impose austerity, etc. Yeah, it's never on rich people that get austerity. It's always everybody else, right? You ever notice that in other countries, especially if you're in like, you know, European countries, it's always the poor people who get austerity. It's never anybody else who gets that. It's, it's always the poor and the middle class who have to tighten their belts. You know, everybody else is like, well, you know, like 
everybody else is like that meme of that that that, that French you know, whatever the hell it is. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, if that actually happened, you would you would see price discovery. You would see prices on everything drastically. What the heck? I don't know why it does this. There's uh, TikTok. It like has me like move the puzzle piece over. Like, I don't know what's up with that. So anyway, so. In, in the case of like, uh, uh, you know, yeah, money printing stopping, yeah, you'd see real price discovery. And, price, and by the way, for, for those of you who don't know what price discovery, maybe some of you don't know, price discovery is just you want 100 ounces of gold for your house, and I want to pay you 80 ounces of gold, right? I, I say, hey, my bid is 80 ounces. Your ask is 100 ounces, right? And then maybe we agree on a price discovery of 90. We meet in the middle. And I say, okay, yeah, I'll concede and I'll give you 90 ounces of gold. And you say, okay, fine, I'll concede and I'll take 90 ounces of gold. We now have a deal, right? Okay, that's called price discovery. Notice what we didn't do was we didn't argue over what an ounce was, right? We didn't argue over the unit of measurement. We just argued over like what the value, what our, what our perceived value of the purchase was. We didn't argue over what a troy ounce of gold was. Fair, I mean, just... Keep that in mind. That's really important for later on. That'll be on the test. Um, getting out of the system. Uh, my social is about aliens. <laughs> uh, appreciate your wit. Thank you. And once again, I, uh, you know, it's not appreciated by everybody. I promise you. People who know me personally, like, no, it's not always appreciated. Um, serious question: Did you get a vaccine? No. 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 I want nothing to do with any of that. Uh, I don't, I don't trust, uh, frankly, I don't trust almost anybody with, with, with anything. Um, I'm very selective on the type of, even the type of medications that I take. Like if it's been around for like 50, 60 years or something like that, I mean, I'll consider taking it, but I rarely ever take, welcome, welcome. Um, I rarely ever take any medications at all. So just, I really try to avoid it as much as I can. Um, everything's expensive junk. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's, that's, that's my shovel analogy. You know, I mean, like, that's the truth. You heard it here first. Uh, uh, I really acknowledge them all and listen to him soon down. So, well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, let's set a date, stop paying bills. Yeah, I know, huh? That would be, that would be, it would be fascinating to see people do that. I think what it's going to take more or less now, if you wanted us, uh, just a, my, my opinion, and again, this is just world according to Axel, man. I mean, like, so don't, don't like hang your hat on this. But I think that what it would take is not just a, like a, like a, a real serious effort by people to say, okay, I'm not paying bill anymore. It would take a, an effort of, uh, of people to say, you, you have to not import the more people. And I know this inflames a bunch of people, right? They get inflamed, like, no, no, no. We did, like, tired and huddled masses, you're in your three and so on. It's like, no, stop. You have to stop that so that that way you can't just be replaced. See, right now, if everybody goes on strike, which let's say that everybody went on strike tomorrow morning. I'd love to see it. You know, all the fast food workers say, that's it. We're not showing up for work. All the truck drivers, nope. All, like, everybody just, we're not doing it. No, no, anybody who was essential right during during the you know the dark time anybody who's essential okay you know who you are if everybody said that's it we're not we're done we're not showing up until you actually pay us re enough money that we can actually function in our own country the country you keep telling us is ours we're not showing up until you actually start paying for that or you know providing enough money to actually make that work let's say that that were the case they would immediately open the borders up and flood the country with even more illegal to try it because it's like nope we can't have that yeah because remember their currency system is based on that it's based on it it's it's because it's, it's based on 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 the on the, the, the labor aspect unfortunately um that's by the way that's one of the challenges that um that mustache guy had i know there's some of you out there that are like well but i liked mustache guy he had some good ideas uh, maybe he did um but the but one of the ones like the idea is like oh well he you know he, he backed the uh uh you know the the the, the mark with the labor of the German people, like it's still a fiat currency and it's still subjective, and that's just as bad as what the dollar is. It actually is. I mean, I, I know I'm gonna get a whole bunch of heat on that, but it's the that's the truth, right? Hard currency ends all of it like nothing else, it ends all the crap, and you find out very quickly who's actually doing the work, 
on, on, on all sides. So, uh, at the grocery store. Well, I hope, you know, hope you didn't have to take out a second mortgage to buy groceries. Uh, 20 year old, yeah, I know. Um, you know, I just posted that actually. Uh, I posted that on, on, another, on another account, on another social media platform. I, I pointed out the idea of, of older vehicles. Like, yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. So I'm, I have a, my, well, you can't see it, but my 06 right here. So, <laughs> um, and you know, which doesn't have anywhere near the problems as some of the new ones. Um, people are completely detached uh, from labor. It takes, pretty, yeah, they, they are. There is, oh man, I did it again. I hate this thing. Um, anyway, well, yeah, I think what it said was like people were, uh, people are kind of detached from the amount of labor. Well, yeah, it's because there isn't, there isn't accurate price discovery for their labor. You have to have accurate price discovery for your labor because by virtue of the price paid in labor to produce a product, you have to be able to have some kind of accurate discussion there. And if you don't have any kind of accuracy, then, you know, and of course, this is the other problem is that is that every, a lot of Americans right now, instead of going back to the original topic, right, because well, we we're talking about the genetic predisposition, like, well, okay, uh, not predisposition, uh, but the, you know, kind of your hard coding, is everybody looking for a job someplace as opposed to owning a business, as opposed to saying, you know what, um, you know, hey, I, I'm an out-of-work machinist, for example, rather than say, oh, I'm an out-of-work machinist, it's like, oh, no, you know what, I have time now, now I'm going to... Uh, put my 40 by 60 shop up next to my house and I'm going to put my machine tools in there and go freelance and do my own fab work, right? Because that's what we used to do in the old days. When the, when the auto manufacturers, for example, you know how many auto manufacturers from the U.S.? It was something like 1,300 back in the day, like way back in the day, right? Back, you know, the Henry Ford days. It's like 1,300 auto manufacturers and they all got bought up and mergers and acquisitions and so forth. Yeah, well, yeah, remember we talked about this? Remember, for those of you, like, remember we talked about this. Durant, you know, the CEO, the then CEO of GM went around buying up all these companies, Buick and, and Pontiac and so on, went around and bought up all these companies. Well, yeah, but he did it with paper money. As soon as he ran up against Ford and Ford said, yep, I'll take gold. Set, back a dump truck up full of gold and I'll take gold and then you can have Ford Motor Company. Every bank turned to rant down and said, no way. Well, yeah, of course. Because he said, you know, yeah, pay it in hard currency. And they couldn't do it. It would have completely destroyed that. Um, guy asking about double action only. Uh, DAO. So, okay, so DAO to me means double action only. Um, they're companies that are essentially decentralized uh, smart contracts. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, if it's a decentralized company and they're, I, I don't know how a smart, unfortunately, I don't know how a smart contract is supposed to work. I think it depends on, on how that would work. I'm all about private contract. That's fine. But I don't know how that would work. Some, like, you'd have to give me an example for something like that, for something specific. I'd have to see something specific to be able to comment accurately, in my opinion. I, I like, anything that I would tell you would just be kind of me hip-shotting, and I'd rather not give you a hip-shot. But, um... Anyway, DAO means double action only to me. Um, sounds like the uh, ideal solution is to become independent and rely on the cloud. Yeah, that's, well, I mean, think about it. That's how human beings evolved for hundreds, thousands of years, right? I mean, it's like small communities of people. And it's also where, like, for example, if you really want quality health care, in my opinion, this, I was just thinking about this the other day. If you're in a small community and you go to your community doctor, right? Because he knows you. And let's say you had a civil, just for example purposes, okay? Just like totally for example purposes. You have like 50 men in your community, 60, 75 women or so, and you've got a bunch of kids and everything out of your community that's like 220 people, let's say, okay? Um, or something to that effect, right? And they're of all different varying ages. But for the most part, you've got about 50 adult men. And what do those 50 adult men do in the civil? They pro probably pretty much support all of it. They pretty much do all the work, all the actual physical work. This is just the truth. I'm not talking about that, that women don't do work, but they do tons of work, but it's a different kind of work, right? Anyway, so if you go in, if you're sick or you're ill or something like that, and you're one of the men of the town, and you're a doctor, like they, they know that they can't really afford to lose you right? Because like you're actually pretty essential to the existence of the town or the civilization or whatever it is. So they're going to, they want to make sure that you're actually going to, plus they also know you personally, right? How many of you have ever walked into a doctor's office and the doctor like spent more than a minute and a half with you, 
right? I mean, it, it, everything's become fast food. Um, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not picking on doctors. I'm just, but I'm answering the question. It's like, I mean, this, like, this is the problem with, so that's why, yeah, small communities are, are actually kind of a better way to go, in my opinion, um, just kind of objectively. And I think the quality of life is better. Now, does that mean that you, you couldn't do, that, do something like that nowadays? Like, no, I think you could. You just have to spread out. But it's harder and harder to spread out when you have people like Gil Bates um, buying up all of, you know, investment property and boomers buying investment properties. Investment property has done, I've said this for a long time, but investment property has done more damage to this country than feminism. And feminism has certainly done a lot of damage to the country. Uh, there's no question about that. But, but investment property has done way more, like twice the damage, twice the damage, uh, the idea of investment properties. Um, because especially properties that you have no intention of ever doing anything with, like, you know, that, I'm sorry, but like that just, that, that excuse just doesn't fly with me. It's a, it's the same answer I would have given sitting bull, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm not saying that, 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 that the natives weren't right. They, they had a, a solid point, but my counterpoint would have been like, well, okay, look, when was the last time you guys rode through here? Like 70 years ago? Well, then. No, you don't get to claim that you have this holy right. Like this is, like well, but the the, the great spirit told me. No, I, you know what? I know. I heard this stuff before. Last night, Jesus appeared appeared to me on a flaming pie and told me this is all mine. No, come on. No, it doesn't doesn't work with me. Um. So no, and anybody can claim that. Anybody can claim that God gave them that. Like come on, that's just whatever. Um, or the great spirit or whatever. Um. Freedom is not being prosecuted uh, for being an opposing political. Well, yeah, uh, I would say that the that the young men that got rounded up in El Salvador would agree with that statement. Um, you know, like, well, but they're what they're horrible guys. Okay, well then, why weren't they? Why weren't? Why didn't that happen? Because in the old days, that's what happened, right? So, you know, like I said, there's two laws on this planet: the laws of physics and the laws of conscience, and. Laws of physics are pretty objective. They apply to everybody. Laws of conscience are subjective somewhat. And if you conquered a group of people and you're like, oh, well, you people are all truly evil. Okay, well, then you should have no problem at all looking in the eye. And <laughs> but if you can't do that, then that means that you probably know that you're in the wrong as well. So just my take on that. Uh... They can't do anything they want without. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, that looks okay. The, this is the this is the case that I've made a, a number of a, a number of times as well. That if you that if you were to if you were to try and mass deport everybody now, you would run the risk of. Well, first of all, you're going to collapse real estate. If you if you actually mass deported 50 million people, like up upwards of let's just call it 25. Let's just take a reasonable number that, that is isn't too isn't isn't too inflammatory. If you deported 25 million people, right? All those. All those boomers and brokers and, and billionaires that have all this real estate, all these, all these, you know, all these rental properties, what would happen to all that? Be empty. I mean, you'd, you'd see, you know, like apartments for three hundred fifty bucks a month again, and they can't have that because they owe too much money on it. And never been a billionaire doesn't owe a billion dollars or something like that. It's just how it works. Um, and yeah, it would collapse. It would take down four hundred one k's and all that stuff. So I would tell everybody, you know, get your money out of, out of out of those markets, you know, before you, before it's too late. But it's like, well, how long can it go on for? I've already answered that on many occasions. It'll go on as long as people want it, as long as they're willing to accept dollars. Um, do every operation transaction uh, via smart contract? Oh well, yeah, I mean, I, I suppose why not? Keep stacking. Yep. Uh, financial physics. Uh, are you? How are you uh, hedging from inflation? Gold, crypto, T bills, something else. Um, I like orange internet money personally. I've been pretty honest about that for a long time. Um, I don't pump it. I don't tell people what you should do with it or anything. I just tell you what I, you know. I actually like it. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's the hardest currency that's ever been in, invented. I think it's the hardest currency that, that that this world has ever seen. So I tend to like that personally. But I, you know, but gold isn't isn't a bad one either. I mean, gold pitched a hell, hell of a game for six thousand years. Um, so you know, could it keep going? I think it depends on the paper markets, and I think it depends on how many people are willing to do what's called a gold leaseback. For those of you who don't know what that means in the industry, gold leaseback means let's say you're some rich, super duper rich guy that owns like uh, you know 50 tons of gold, or just not even not 50 tons. Let's say that you own two tons of gold, two 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 uh, two tons of of, of, of physical metal. Um, a lot of 
brokerages and bankers, for that matter, will, will, will lease the gold from you so they can put it in their vaults. They'll give you fiat, and then they put it in their vaults and they say, see, look, here's all this gold. Look how awesome this is, right? So you see these pictures with Z and others that are sitting on these big vaults of gold and everything. You're making the assumption that that's their gold. See, you, just because you saw the picture of them sitting on a big pile of gold, you know, dragon style, doesn't mean that that's actually their gold. There could be other claims on that gold, right? By somebody who leased them that gold for that photo op, right? Just, you know, just, just like, a, you know, just, just like, just like rappers, you know, that, that rent Bentleys, you know, <laughs> to do their music videos. It's the same basic idea. Um, so you're making the assumption that that's their gold, which is that's, and that's why, for example, like Bricks, for example, had to abandon. They didn't even make it three hours. They couldn't even. They didn't even make it three minutes, and they had to abandon the gold standard altogether because they're like, we, there's no way we can do this. Yeah, of course not, because you'd all go broke. Again, all your politicians would have to actually look at everybody in the eye and go, um, you guys are all broke, and, and it's all our fault. No one's going to do that. They'd have to move to the mountains of Chile and learn how to speak German. That ain't going to happen. Um, uh, thanks for sharing what you know. <laughs> I, I'm trying. Today's real estate prices rely on even higher prices. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. It's greater fool theory. It's just pure greater fool theory. It's who can I, you know, again, you know, who can I get to pay more for what I just paid for? You know, I paid, I paid a hundred thousand bucks, for example, for this. And, and now I need somebody to pay 200,000 for this. And you're, you're just gambling as to whether or not you can, you can do that. Apple. Uh, so, uh, did somebody give me an apple or something? I don't know. Well, whoever it was, thank you. Um, uh, great content recently. Well, welcome. Thank you. Uh, if you go back through, again, if you go back through my older content and everything, it'll kind of help you kind of maybe bring you up to speed a little bit. Um, you know, and I'm pretty boring, actually. So just, just you know, like, followers beware. You follow me at your own risk, especially on, on the other platform. You know, that other platform, because um, I'm a little more uncensored there. <coughs> um food stamp make Costco. Yeah, they do. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a subsidy. It's a, and it's not a subsidy for people that you think it's a subsidy for. It's, it's, it's always sold as a subsidy for the poor, right? Well, we're going to give the poor UBI, right? Remember we talked about this. Somebody asked me about the universal high basic income when Elon floated. The idea is that, well, okay, everybody will have this high income and they can do whatever they want. It's just a bailout to companies because they know that people will spend that money in the same companies, right? I owe my soul to the company store. Look up that song and look up the lyrics and read the lyrics. Read, don't read them like a song, just read the lyrics. And it, it pretty much explains how that whole scam works. It's right, that's why that song was so popular because it's accurate. Um, you know, the dollar is sort of a company store. It's like Disney bucks, right? Disney bucks are worth money at Disney and, and they can control the value of the Disney bucks. Well, whereas Accurate price discovery, once again, when we talk about things like gold or orange internet money. Like, again, when I say gold, I'm talking physical gold, right? You either have it or you don't. It weighs or it doesn't. It's pure or it's not. That's it. We're talking about the physicals. And when you talk about, or in the case of orange internet money, it's like, dude, you have the blockchain at dead ends right to your wallet. That's it. Okay? So when you talk about actual hard money price discovery, it ends... All of the scam, like you think that there's, I mean, like you have no idea how bad it is. Like that's why everything feels like a scam. Remember, I did a video, I don't know, like mm, three weeks ago or something, where I ended, like there was a dude who's like, why does everything feel like a scam? Because it is. Everything is a scam. It's because everything's turned into a scam. All right, that's that's rewarded. Every everything is re uh, scams are rewarded now. Um, you know, honesty, hard work, ethic, and all that kind of stuff. You know, um, you know, producing an actual result. That's not rewarded. No, those people are treated terribly. Um, I'm happy to help. I'm ho hopefully, uh, hopefully, I'm helpful to people. Um, you know, I'm not particularly looking to get famous or anything. So that's not my goal here. It never has been. Uh, I'm trying to have if if I could get maybe like just a couple dozen people to understand all this stuff and then start explaining it to other people and everything. I'm good. My my job is done because then that'll take that'll take root, especially if, if you have the same type of thought process and you're like, yeah, if I can get them to understand this stuff, then it's, it starts changing things. It start, that, that actually starts changing things long term. So there's this ripple effect that sort of takes place. Think of it like Josh, for example. Josh, the carpenter from nowhere, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the guy, 
that from out of just sort of just appears out of the ether, the so-called virgin birth and everything. Josh shows up on the scene, total a carpenter, a blue collar guy, right? Starts talking about a bunch of philosophical and monetary stuff, which he doesn't get credit for actually. Um, was a brilliant economist. And here we are 2,000 odd years later, we still talk about this guy, this like total no name from nowhere. Um, and by the way, I say that as an atheist, by the way. I mean, I'm just, but I mean like, dude, I mean, you, you have to give credit where credit's due. When you have somebody who's being talked about 2,000 years later, there's still people talking about it. It's like, mm, dude, that's a big deal. Uh, God, it's my friend, well, is it waste food, buy junk food, and everything, so it's worse. Than, yeah, I, junk, don't eat junk food. Stop. Uh, serious thoughts on flat earth. <laughs> Everybody asks this. The thing about flat earth is, like, the answer you're going to get from me is, is something akin to I kind of don't care about it. It's like, I'm here, and I, like, I have to deal with the reality that exists here, whether or not it's flat or it's a ball hurtling through space. I mean, and so it's, it, I'm more concerned about the physics that exists, the, the actual practical physics that exists here, right? It's sort of like the, the uh, somebody asked me one time about my um, opinion of Nikola Tesla. So not Tesla the company, but but Nick himself. And the, the the problem that I had was that when when Nick's idea was we're going to pull energy or electricity out of the ether, the problem is then how do you ground? Because if you just energized everything, electricity requires two things. It re to complete the circuit stuff, it requires positive and negative. And in order to make that work, and it's just like in order to bring life into this world, you know what I mean? And that's what it requires. Like this is just objective stuff that you can see. And so I concern myself with more of the physics of, of uh, the, more of the practical physics, which is where I get the term financial physics. It's just, it's more of the practical, uh, practical application as opposed to the theoretical application. So whether the earth is flat or a ball, it kind of doesn't really matter to me if, if people are trying to figure out how to pay for the groceries. Make sense? Um, Obsolesc plan obsolescence. Yeah, I don't know that you'll get plan obsolescence to be outlawed. It doesn't really need a law, though. That's the thing. Um, if you have an if you have an honest occur currency and an honest uh, an, 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 if you have an honest currency and an honest uh, an honest, honest system, which takes an honest currency, companies like that go out of business very quickly, very quickly, especially if it's a hard currency. Because remember, put yourself in the position of a consumer. You're a consumer. I'm a consumer. We all consume stuff, do we not? Okay. So you go to the store and you have hard currency that doesn't lose any value. Let's say that it doesn't lose any, there's, for you there's zero inflation, okay? You go to the store and say, hey, you know, I wanna buy something. You're about to exchange hard currency for something. You're going to want maximum value in return. You're gonna to wanna to have them like, 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 hey, I mean, I'll pay for this, but dude, I mean, like this better be a, a real good product because I don't wanna pay you for something and have to buy it again. And it, it turns, it, you get that, you know, that caveat emptor, right? Be, buyer beware. It starts to actually trigger in everybody's minds and they start to think a bit more long term. <clears throat> so going back to, for example, going way back into antiquity here on this conversation, the RK selection thing, I think that people's minds are actually triggered by that and they start thinking long term if their currency isn't made me worthless every single day. Like, I mean, the, the, the faster you print currency, the shorter your attention span will get, right? So the, the harder your currency and the longer it, it has, it, it has uh, um, uh, you know, uh, staying power, you know, or like for example, in, in the case of gold, you have this, the idea of um, your uh, uh, atomic stability, right? The longer that, that lasts, right? The longer you're going to think, one second, yes. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so you guys got me for about two more minutes and I'm out of here. Um, Let's see here. Uh, working in diesel world, international, uh, the, and pop and ownership going away. Uh, yeah, I mean, I own a diesel truck myself. I own a, a, a semi truck and I'm an owner operator and I do long haul. Um, not as much right now, just a, you know, doctor's orders, but uh, because of the uh, car wreck. I mean, I can probably drive now, but I, you know, I'm a, 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 not officially released. But, um, but yeah, as an, as an owner operator myself, as you can, as you can tell, um, the, 
yeah, there's there's a lot of that going away because they just they can't make it they can't make any profit off of it. And interest rates are you know when you have interest rates that go that high, I mean, that's what ends up happening with your with like like your farms for example. Um, why is farming so hard? In my opinion, the farming itself isn't terribly difficult. I don't have a problem with doing the hard work, you know, the shoveling, you know, manure. And like, I never had a problem with any of that stuff. The physical work, I didn't have an issue with it. The, the problem that I saw with farming was the amount of interest and taxes and, and all the crap that the government throws at you. That's what made it hard work. That's what made it so horrible to do. That's what made it just where you didn't want to do it. It made it drudgery. Um, but if it was just, if you didn't have any of that, well, then the actual, like, you know, cleaning up after horses and everything and making sure that, you know, uh, watching the videos of Nate the Hoof Guy, you know, and figuring out how what's going on with your cow, and then and that's a little bit easier. Um, stuff once in a while, like your thoughts on economics. Um, serious question, do you uh, use toothpaste before? No, I do not, actually. Um, I believe Bitcoin, uh, Bank Slayer. All right, stuff. Guys, I got to go. Uh, sorry I couldn't get to everybody's questions. If you have a serious question, somebody, just you know, send me a DM or something, and I'll try and get to you and everything. But I got to scoot. I got uh, guests here. So see you next time.